Hey, did you like that? Yeah, that was a time lapse of the sky after a storm during a sunset. It would have been cool if I set up for like 10 minutes and did a thing, but it's my lame attempt at being Casey Neistat. <laughs> Welcome to Dig Deeper Network with your boy Cody G. I'm coming to you with something that, that requires some courage. And that is to explain my deprogramming um, as somebody who was a Trump supporter in 2016. Uh, how I deprogram myself from the Republican Party, from the mainstream, from everything here coming up into 2020. And I hope sharing this story might help you question where you lie and uh, what you truly believe in and assess if you've gotten to a point where uh, your political beliefs are outside of your al actual alignment today. So last night I went to a family member's house for dinner and we had the inevitable conversation that's going on right now, which is, so who you voting for? And I thought I had a pretty good answer to that. Uh, the person who had asked me is backing Joe Biden um, as their candidate of choice at the moment. And um, I had to kind of express where my beliefs of today come from. Uh, yeah, actually, it's it's kind of it's kind of tough to express. Um, I, I don't know how you're gonna feel about it, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not supporting Trump's re-election in 2020, and I think the candidates who are fighting to represent the people the most today is the so-called far left, progressive left, uh, socially democratic candidates. And uh, today we're in a state where um, there is an emerging political party thanks to uh, the founding of Justice Democrats by secular talks Kyle Kalinske. Um, and so now there are a few justice Democrats that have position politically. And they're running on no corporate PAC money. They are running on a set policy positions. And their alignment is actually with the people far more than the centrist or corporate Democrats and certainly the Republican Party. And they have not come out with a uh, justice version of Republicans, which I think might be needed today as well. But just a little to, to explain my D, uh, my falling out of love with Trump uh, really started when he could not fulfill any of his campaign promises. And in fact, he's gone backwards and has backed, um, you know, the neoconservative platform these days. He got all the wrong people in his cabinet, and now he's just, a, uh, you know, one of those right-wingers who are um, decimating the, the country for its people. So, my fundamental belief right now in backing progressive left candidates is money in politics. So, if, obviously you know Congress has not had a good approval rating in a while. And in today's age, we're starting to wake up and realize hey, all of our politicians have corporate interests in their pocket and when it comes to when they're out doing their job, you know, uh, as far as like passing bills, laws, voting, etc., um, 
it's actually their votes are being cast for the people who are in their pockets rather than the people who had elected them. And so you see a candidate like Bernie Sanders, who exists in Congress, is the only, like, against the fray of all of this stuff, um, has had no money from corporate interests besides unions. And he has been right on, uh, just on the right side of votes, like, for decades now when uh, many other politicians have checkered backgrounds and at this point you can point out you know, where that they have failed. So first of all, I think a purge of the government is needed in the sense that uh, we can no longer have private interests influencing our politicians. Now that is attacking the system and the establishment as it exists today, so it's kind of a crazy proposition and who knows what would happen to the company if Raytheon and you know all the defense companies and you know the healthcare and pharmaceutical companies were out of the politicians pockets you know would they maintain their existence here in the country and I can say without a doubt when I envision a better America moving forward it is without these uh, companies who are pulling strings uh, for our government. So first of all, the first position that helped me get away from the uh, slippery slope that I was on was the fact that um, I don't want our politicians to be representing companies anymore. They need to go and fight for their constituents and the American people and stop playing favors with all the people who can fund politicians and pull their strings in the government. So that's the first one. The second reason why I pulled away, not just from the Republican Party and from uh, Trump, is how we spend our money as a government. So there are lots of proposals to help the American people out there proposed by the progressive left. And the response, every time you can almost count on it, is, well, how are you going to pay for that? Now that's too expensive. It's going to cost this. However, when it comes to war, when it comes to nuking eight countries like we're doing right now, when it comes to uh, th throwing billions and billions of dollars at, like, Saudi Arabia and... Uh, We are aligned with the wrong people internationally now. Uh, we are not really being backed by our allies very much anymore. And that's because we're a war hawk country who's found out that it is profitable for us to go to war and to regime change countries and wage offensive wars, not deploying the military for defense, but literally attacking countries and trying to dethrone them so that we can put prop up, you know, put our propped up person to keep selling us the cheap oil or for us to. So between the government and defense contractors and our allies, they found out that it's profitable for us to be uh, terrible war hawks creating atrocities across the planet. And the fact that we haven't been retaliated on very much shows that um, the world is kind of in fear of us in a lot of ways. And so, for me, I know for a fact that our money needs to be spent in places like Flint, Michigan, or like in Alabama where third world country diseases are resurfacing, like a hookworm, um, where our infrastructure gets a grade of D plus and everything is crumbling. You know, there's definitely evidence of infrastructure woes going on right now near me. Um, and it's not just here. Um, we have no problem declaring an emergency or using an executive order or just uh, flying it through Congress to spend trillions of dollars on war and into our military and on the defense contractors 
I mean, it's endless, and it's not brought to the American people like, hey, you want to invade Iran? It's not brought to Congress anymore for permission to go to war anymore. And so at this point, uh, we are not taking the isolationist strategy that Trump had campaigned on, um, where he did actually state uh, X, Y, and Z are dumb wars and we need to pull out and such. Um, literally, we're funding and funding and overfunding and flooding military with our just printable money. And uh, when all the money gets over there and it's super heavy and it weighs over there, um, unfortunately, it's on us to create the value for the country anymore. Because there's no reason that we have 900 plus military bases when every other country has about a dozen worldwide. And there's no reason that we need to uh, wage shadow wars and be in the, mil in the Middle East forever. And the fact that we're backing Saudi Arabia right now and helping giving them all these freaking weapons that they're buying from us uh, and, and just nuking the crap out of places like Yemen, like where they're bombing open air markets and hospitals and schools. And they're like Saudi Arabia is one of the world's biggest like crimes against women and gays and uh, killing and capturing journalists and stuff like that. Yet we th view them as an important ally and not our enemy right now because all the politicians and all the people who are getting the money, um, you know, like Saudi Arabia has been pumping money into Trump's resorts and golf courses and stuff, paying extremely inflated prices in order for, they, they just like us, huh? No, they're getting favors out of that. So it kind of goes back to money and politics for that one, but... Uh, for me, the way that we're spending our money, especially way massively overfunding the military, is uh, a problem for me. And a, a billion dollars here or there towards social causes is going to put a massive dent in things as far as the way of life and uh, improving America. And uh, doing this war hawkish spending trillions of dollars and... Uh, not really headed towards a, a good goal or cause. Um, and the fact that they're coming out and saying, well, we're worried about crimes against women in Afghanistan and stuff, yet we back Saudi Arabia. They're our number one right now. We're like making money off of them at the top level of, of companies and stuff. So Go ahead, F up out of here with your America's great, you know, Trump bullshit where you think that what we're doing globally is smart. It's really not. In fact, it's uh, strengthening Al-Qaeda and terrorist groups to a massive level. Guess what? Once, once the neocons are out of the government, yeah, we're going to have to fight something else in the Middle East. And this time... It's well-armed evildoers overseas. And so we're fueling that because we find some marginal economic uh, good reason to do it. And it's just, you know, we're doing a lot of evil things across our borders. And um, better believe it, you don't know about a lot of this stuff because... We listen to, you know, we're influenced by mainstream media who's also controlled by top-level people who want to control what the masses think. So, reason number two. How we're spending our money. Number three. That I started backing the progressive left movement over anything else now. Medicare for all. Now, I know there's a lot out there, uh, you know, supporting Biden still. Uh, if you listen to John Delaney in these uh, debates, um, there's also Buttigieg and um, Beto O'Rourke, uh, 
uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, these are the corporate level Democrats who have corporations in their pockets already for their campaign financing. Um, whereas the progressive left is actually counting on individual donors and are actually stating, um, I'm going to represent the people, I'm going to be people funded, and um, I'm not going to take money from those who want me to do their bidding later. So, uh, Medicare for all is another proposal to tackle and get rid of a, a pretty big industry that is um, health insurance companies. But today, I'd like to hear an argument against this. Today, healthcare companies, their job is to get in between you and your doctors and the hospitals, and they make the decisions. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cover this. Maybe we're gonna throw. A percentage of money towards that but uh, you're gonna have to pay for the first five thousand dollars in my case I got the bottom of the barrel one is financially I'm not in a great position right now um, I have to pay the first seventy eight hundred dollars for a deductible on an accident or medical emergency and um, statistics bear out that health related bankruptcy is a big thing now because these for-profit health insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, they're, they're finding ways to pull billions out of the American people off of their pain and suffering. And they exist to uh, kneecap all of us and the care uh, that we're missing out on. Um, I know many people who are opting out of health insurance and... Uh, you know, those who are not able to pay. All right, so it was, it was a family of three, and their, the proposal for health insurance was about $700 a month, and that was, you're going to have to pay like a $5,000 deductible first, and um, there's networks, a limited amount of people that you can go to, limited amount of hospitals and, and care places. 45,000 people roughly estimated die every year in America because of their lack or inability to get coverage um, with health care. And they're getting turned away from care providers because the middlemen and all the people who are yanking these prices up, well... They're, they're playing, you know, they're swimming in our blood and they are profiting massively off of deciding who to care for and who not to and to find their loopholes. Um, there's death panels. Um, if, you listen, if you ever heard of recidivism, uh, that's a case where they review you, uh, patient in the hospital, as far as your coverage goes and you are uh, in need of what would be an expensive procedure done, well, health insurance companies review this, review you, review your charts, and their job is literally to find a way to get out of paying for it. So recidivism is they find ways to boot you from their health coverage because... Uh, you ha it says here that you had acne as a teenager. Uh, well, we classify that as skin lesions, and you didn't disclose that to us when you got the insurance, so therefore, we're not covering you. You're kicked off. You've got to f uh, foot the bill for uh, tens of thousands of dollars for that emergency procedure that you need, like right now. Uh, and that's how... That is one of many ways that health insurance companies out there are cheating their people of care and finding a way to make profit. Medicare for all is a proposal of a government takeover of insurance. And it doesn't ban supplemental, so the insurance companies would have to find a way to fit into the new supplemental um, 
offering and finding a way to continue to do business, but it would massively cut into them, probably lay off a lot of people, but it's about damn time uh, because they are mismanaging our money and they are killing us. About 45,000 a year. So, studies have been done and certain disclosures have had to happen. And, and what we find is that there are between 50 to 80% of the money given to health insurance companies are being paid back out in care. Like literally there are some companies out there with a 50-50 split. 50% of it going to their administrative costs and 50% being paid out to those who have coverage with them. Uh, Medicare for all would be um, about us using 92, nine, like somewhere between 90 and 95% of the money towards care and the remainder to uh, administrative costs. But it is cutting out the for-profit middlemen uh, mafia-like health insurance companies and the progressive left Thankfully, there are some candidates on the stage getting through to the third debate that back Medicare for all. And I implore you to recognize the difference because of the mentioned uh, corporate Democrats, so to speak, centrist Democrats. Well, they're backing plans that are like Medicare Plus and different, different names for it. It's, it's misleading. Uh, they gave you like this word vomit soup and you're not really sure what's going on. Be, just to be very clear, Medicare for all is the plan that's going to fix our healthcare system right now. Anything else is a half measure and it keeps the for-profit companies there between us and our healthcare still. Like the public option, like Obamacare for example, not not a helpful direction to go um, as far as like getting more coverage for people I think it slightly did that but that's public option or whatever that's not actually the way to go anymore that's literally just keeping things the same and you have to recognize all the Democratic candidates that are pushing for not Medicare for all and those are the ones that you can expect to take money from the lobbyists, the pharma, and the healthcare companies out there. So, uh, reason number three is Medicare for all. Big believer in it. I couldn't back any other party uh, or any candidate who says that they are not for Medicare for all. You guys, I'm sorry. It took me quite some time to give you just three reasons why I hopped off the Trump train and the uh, dark money politicians. Um, I, I only gave you three and I went in depth on those three and to be honest, there's probably a good three more. So I'm looking for a reaction to this video. Um, hopefully somebody's gonna ask me to keep going uh, like what I'm saying. Uh, left, right, or you know, kind of confused. Um, I think that this is a critical thing to talk about here. And so I definitely would like to get the conversation going and hear from you down in the comment section below. Um, challenge me. I'm an open book, uh, but I'm well studied and I well believe my position now. Um, it's going to be tough to talk me off of something like Medicare for All. It's going to be tough to talk me off of um, our backing of Saudi Arabia and how we just print endless money for our military who's doing nothing useful abroad. Uh, it's going to be tough to talk me out of money in politics. Um, no. Uh, politicians should stop representing companies and start representing the people. And thank goodness, thank God, there are candidates who are speaking for the American people. 
And so with that, in the next three reasons video, I'm going to tell you which candidates that I like, but in telling you that the progressive left is the party to go with, that's the one who I'm subscribing to at this moment in time, um, I think you can kind of conclude who it is that I'm leaning towards. But anyway, looking forward to hearing what you have to say down below. If you're still watching, hey, I appreciate you. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and sub. Till next time.